what up, SNM Miss Ford, and welcome back, guys. Here's your boy Sean. And your girl. Yes, yes, yes. Bam! Welcome, SNM Squad. How are you guys doing today? We hope you guys are absolutely amazing. Yes, guys, if you're having a rough day, let's turn around right now with some good energy and some good content. Yes, baby. We need good content. Yes, we do. Solid, good content. Yes. To my lovely wife. What do we have today? All right, baby. Today it? we'll be reacting to Man Dies and Learns. We have it completely backwards. What? Wow. Man Dies he and dies. Learns. We have it completely backwards. So he must have learned something. Goodness and gracious. He got message like, for if us. we have it completely backwards, backwards, we are in trouble. So the whole time we just living a lie, we just living backwards. Yeah, let's go. I'm ready to get into All it. All right, guys. So before we get into it, make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and also turn on your post notification bell so you guys can notify. I'm ready to hear what this guy got to say. You ready, babe? Let's Here we go, go baby. Good energy, good content. Bam! Let's we need some go, good content, squad. baby. Yes. Here we go. Tell a story. I just start smiling um, because it all comes back. So I heard you had a near-death experience. Uh, let's let's hear about it. Okay, uh, uh, it was 1994. I was working as a firefighter in Santa Barbara. I was at Station 11 on a paramedic engine. I was an engineer. I drove, and there was a powerful flu epidemic going on in the area, and lots of people were sick. And emergency rooms were full of people. And we went to a patient. She'd been cooped up in her room, and she w was really ill. And it was obvious we had to move fast because everything about her was wrong. And I uh, grabbed the O2 and booted across the bed and got above her and got a mask on her. And as I was fixing it, tightening it up, she let out this big exhale because she so happy that uh, we had arrived. And I was taking a, a breath in and I felt my lungs fill with her breath. And I said, well, if, if that's not an inoculation, I don't know what is. And a couple of days later, I was really sick. At this point, I was really ill and I was at home. I was circling the drain. It was hard to get out of bed. I was throwing up and it going the other way. It was a afternoon of a Oh, the third day, I think I was looking in the mirror and I said, man, I don't even look like myself. Everything was dark. Wow. My heart was racing. It was like 150. And I tried to take my pulse at my wrist because that's a good indicator of what your blood pressure is. And I couldn't get a pulse at my wrist. So I knew it was below 80. Uh, so I called my niece. I called my sister and my niece picked up and she, I tried to talk to her and all it was just a whisper. And she knew there was trouble. She hung up, dialed 911 and Santa Barbara County Fire came and picked me up guys did a wonderful job. They started high flow IVs. It was obvious that I was severely dehydrated and got me in an ambulance and got me to the hospital. And when we went in, it, the place was full, it was full of people, full of kids and adults. And everybody had this same really powerful flu. And I got put in a room and they kept changing out the IVs. I got, uh, I had a couple of bags by then. I think another one was hung. By the next day, I, when I left, they said they'd given me 11 liters of fluids. They're trying to float the system because um, something happened and, and I don't I don't blame anybody um, or you know I don't have any uh, ill feelings towards anybody about it because it led to this event which was some something that was you know meant to be. And anyway, the nurse came in and she said, everyone's getting these two drugs, something for pain, which was a morphine type thing, and something for nausea. She pushed him into the IV port. And, uh, you know, I kind of was sitting up, I was get, you know, getting dressed, my wife was there. And I was like, I think I can go home. And she goes, nope, the doctor hasn't even seen you yet. And these are orders for everybody. Anyway, she pushed it and I keeled over. And my wife. Hold up. So was he saying the once way... the IV entered into his stream, he passed over? Yes, he killed over. The way that he is explaining what happened, you can feel the emotion from his, like, how his voice is, is trembling. Yes. He still feels it. Explaining the story is taking him back to these exact moments. Wow. Goodness gracious. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Well, I said uh, that, you know, it really scared them. Uh, they came in and they narcan you. And Narcan is something that gobbles up the opiates. And they narcan you. She had it written down three times. 
and you weren't coming back. So they they put me in intensive care for the night and had all this equipment and tubes and stuff on me. And I don't know any of this. I just, my wife hung in there. And at some point during that night, I left my body. And I found myself flying through this star-filled realm. Every time I tell this story, I just start smiling. Um, because it all comes back. But yeah, I was flying through this star-filled realm and there were all these magnificent stars, orbs all around me. And they were so welcoming. And it was like I was being paraded through. And I just, all I felt was everything a human ever wants to feel. Wow. Just acceptance and love and joy and being held. And all those things, all those uh, negative things that we have about ourselves, they were gone. They were absolutely gone. Things like, you know, anger and resentment or spite or jealousy. In my opinion, those emotions Woo. do not travel with us. They stay here. They're tools for us to learn from. So anyway, I was flying through this star-filled realm feeling absolutely ecstatic, like a cosmic orgasm. And it, it wasn't just an explosion, it was a, that was a full time vibe. That is what we come from. We get glimpses of it here. When we score the winning touchdown or we get that job we wanted or get the girl, you know, and all these victories, as you roll them all into one, times it by a million, that is your <laughs> vibration. So yeah, we come down here for to push against this really dense, harsh vibrations. And uh, it's really a wonderful gift. It, it really is. I'm cruising along and there was a cosmic orgasm, just continuous and, oh, and I felt like I'd been released from a hot, dark closet. And I was this huge expanded cloud, a huge expanded balloon. It seemed like I went out forever. And the thing, the thing that I kept saying while I was flying along and I was enjoying everything and I kept saying, how in the world did I believe I was this dude? It was such a crazy Whoa. trick that I was this person and I had all these good points and bad points and, you know, buttons, you know, there's, we all have them, emotional buttons that are going to send me into whatever depression and they were gone. All that was gone. All that was gone, and that remained with uh, the person that was Bill Letson. And I, I had full knowledge of Bill Letson's entire life and knew all the details, and I didn't want anything to do with it. And I like him. He's a good guy. But I didn't want anything to do with it. The thought of going back was out of the question. It, my body was, I was well aware that my body was behind, and it was like a banana peel. What are you going to do with a banana peel? You're going to throw it away. And that's what it felt like. So I fly along and then all of a sudden I landed. I landed in a place that was solid. It had indirect lighting and there Whoa. were gurneys around and there was equipment that was hanging from the ceiling. It was like a facility or a clinic or something. And wow. right in front of me it were there were beings. There were these three short little hooded guys and they looked exactly like those beings in the movie Communion. The guys I saw, they were in front of me, they had big smiles on their face, and they had these dark hoods and uh, squatty little bodies. And one woman wrote to me and she said, I was taken by these many times as a kid. And she goes, I called them the Warthog Men. The Warthog Men have come and, and taken me. And she said, when I saw that movie Communion, uh, my, you know, I dropped my popcorn. And says that they looked exactly like that. And I've gotten a number of emails from people saying, thank you for doing this because I thought it was just mine. So anyway, yeah, they, they look kind of, um, I don't know, creepy is the right word, but they look different. But for me, they were sweethearts. And they were saying things like, how was it? What did you learn? What can you tell us? And I was extremely confused. All of a sudden I was in this place with these beings from a cartoon, basically. And one of them stepped forward and he took a long look at me and then he turned to the other two and he said, he doesn't remember us. And they all started giggling. And I was like, well, guys, I'm having a little trouble. All of a sudden things are very strange from my perspective, you know? And uh, I kind of remember you, but give me a little time. And they were giggling and bouncing around and they were wonderful. And then there was this other guy and he was sort of in charge. He was kind of in the background. He came forward and he was this tall, wispy guy. And he had this incredible 
ecstatic smile. His eyes were open, his eyebrows were up, and he had this wonderful smile and laugh. And he was obviously in charge, but he was the best boss anybody could ever have. He wasn't, uh, you know, a, very strict at all. When he came forward towards me, my throat just tightened and my chest expanded. And I thought I was going to break down in uncontrollable crying from love. There was so much love pouring from this being that it was overwhelming. It was paralyzing. Um, and I, I just love, I just loved it. I loved those guys. Uh, he was cool. There, there was some back and forth stuff. And uh, every time I said something, he had this chuckle. I could feel it in, inside of me. He had this laugh. I got the impression that, that you know, um, looking at it from a third person, that that was a relationship between a, a father and a child. And he loved me unconditionally. And at one point I said, I, I'm not going back there. No way, no how, ever. So I guess I got to move on from this place eventually. And uh, so, you know, what's next? A review of my life? Uh, is, would you guys like to get started with that? And he just, uh, he just loved that. He just cracked up uh, like a little, like I was a little toddler trying to take over. And he said, sure, sure, let's do that. How do you want to start? So I started talking and I was telling uh, stories about um, jobs that uh, I wish they'd taken. You know, my wife and I got this offer for this job on an island off the coast and we were going to live on this island by ourselves and, and take care of the wildlife. And it was really super remote. It was like an hour helicopter ride off the coast. And, and she wanted that. That was that was right up her alley. And I took a fire job. I still wanted excitement. And But I, I wish I'd done that for her because she's never asked for anything, but she did want that. So yeah, I talked a little bit about that and a few other things. And nobody was listening. They didn't care. It was obvious that I was brought in there for a quick show and tell. And I wasn't staying. It wasn't the end of my life. And I was the only one in the room that didn't know that. And at one point he said, okay, that's enough. He stepped forward like a father and said, time to go back. And that just floored me. I was like, what? Go back? I'm not going back there. There's no way. He says, yeah, you got to go back. You got things to do and they're important. And the three little guys, it was like they were they were reassigned. They just disappeared. They went somewhere else in that facility. And it was just he and I, and uh, he came forward and he he's like, okay, you're going back. And he, as he stepped forward, I felt myself slipping back. The place just started to break up. It started to dematerialize. It's like I was being beamed out of there and I was going to another channel was going to another frequency and oh. it was a descending feeling and I dropped away into darkness it wasn't a good place it wasn't um some place you wanted to be it was lonely and it was dismal and you didn't want to stay there then I I, I was back in my body and I woke up and a nurse came by and she says you're awake and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I need to talk to you. And she said, I, I just got to go tell the doctor. We were, we've been worried about you. We didn't know what was going to happen with you. We didn't know what was going on. And I said, OK, that's cool. You can go talk to the doctor. But first, what am I doing back here? You know, I was I was pissed. I said I was home. I'd made it out of here. I was home with my best bros. How is it that I ended up back here? I had bought the farm. I was convinced of it. She said, honey, you've been in escrow, but you fell out of escrow and now you're back with us and you're going to have to get your head around that. And I thought that was, you know, looking back, that was really good advice because after that experience, anybody who has an experience like that, you know, the, um, the yogis and the, the spiritual teachers, they'll tell you, get back in your life and chop wood and carry water and do the things that support your life and keep it going because you're on a journey. You know, you're, you're a soldier for the higher self, this higher version of you that came for experiences that are mapped out. You know, get back on the job and make them proud on the other side that you gave your best and you, you made the highest vibration choices in this life. And 
what, what then, so then what what's what was the dark place that you spent a little time in and what, what was its point what's the purpose of it it's up to us to create our vibration you know when we live our life and our vibration is low because we've been selfish and self-centered and mean-spirited and you know we all we all know these people we've all met them and when we leave our bodies when we die and leave our bodies our vibration is going to match that low vibration of that those lower places and that's well where we'll be stuck it's not forever it's just till we sort out where we went wrong in this life and because we are these infinite amazing beings if you listen to those people who you know they they give a um a video about going to hell it almost every time it's like they sort it out one woman was in a coma for weeks and at one point she she sorted it out and she started um singing a spiritual song that she sang in church and she popped right out of hell <laughs> and, and but and she said that most of the time she had no idea she was dead this thing about leaving this world in an astonished state you know you're going to bump around in these low vibrational places until you can sort out that astonishment and for some it's it could be a long time edgar casey when he used to leave his body to give a reading he would sit quietly until the vibration started right in his eyes and uh he would start that um that rem sleep that blinking thing that uh you, you talked about and i feel it all the time then he would find himself a little speck of light outside of his body and he knew that he had to follow the light in order to stay safe and that the first uh level of re the realms that he visited or he moved through he would move over to the staircase and it was this like jacob's ladder and he would start up the staircase and he would pass these little hooded gnomes and elves and things and they had very dark robes at uh, the lower levels and then they'd be light colored at the higher levels and there'd be like eight levels i think and he'd go into the kashik records and get a reading and return but he said that those first that first level was a place of nightmares the things that were alive in that area were nightmarish people were there but they were greatly deformed they'd have huge hands or giant feet or you know just these body parts that were really bizarre looking and he he said as he, he would follow the light to this stairwell and and then he would uh, ascend and he'd pull out of those places. And, you know, I think this guy, Michael Tamara, he talks about this thing as we go through these lives and we sort out what we really are, who we really are, and we die well. We die realizing uh, that we live forever and we can't be harmed. And I just got to stay the course and follow the light. We're, we're living in an illusion. This is a really good play and we all got parts in it, but when we go home, you don't want to come back here. This thing we call death, we've got it completely backwards. It is a beautiful thing. It is a 10 million percent upgrade instantly. We have not lost anybody. They've slipped out of the physical and they've gone home. And they're just a little further up the trail than we are right now. But we'll see them again and everything is fine. Everything is beyond fine for them. Hey, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to know what video to watch next, I would suggest this one. This seems like a really good video for you to watch right now. Yeah, that seems like a good one. Oh, you could subscribe. You could do that too. Sure. Subscribe or watch this video. Absolutely. Up to you. Bye bye. Great job. Wow. I truly believe that story because it gave me chills. It gave me goosebumps. Wow. Just to know that he visited heaven yes. and was able to come back to tell a story. Yes. Wow. That was a life-changing wow. experience for him. And I'm happy <clears throat> that he got to experience that, even though he had to come back. Yeah. You know. He didn't want to come he's back. He's spreading the word about <clears throat> what he saw. Now, I also have had the experience of going to hell. Mm. And I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Woo. That's for another video. Woo. But what I saw was very real. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, it's definitely real. It's real. You know, when we die, something happened to our spirit, our body. Something 
transition. The spirit. Something. Our spirit most definitely leaves our body. And that, our that body story. is still alive. I think people think the body dies and then the spirit leaves. The, the spirit, spirit leaves. leaves first and then yeah. the body dies right. without the, body the spirit. Dies. Right. But I mean, but I, I, think, expe- I I had an experience. But I think our spirit lives forever. Yes, he was um, experiencing total love, mm. total bliss, total happiness. Yes, and I guess that was you know God. His version of heaven. His version of heaven. Yes, and it was God laughing, and I remember the saying, yes. "If you want to make you know." God laughed, tell me your plans. Yes. And that's what I just thought about that. But yeah. <laughs> it just seems so real. Like, okay, that, that right there, everything that he said will happen. Then he drops to this place, this dark place. Mm, right. And he has to come back here. I can only imagine how it feels for him to know that on the other side of here. Yes. You know, the feeling is right. so amazing and to have to continue this life feeling all the pains of life. What you know about the, um, cosmic orgasm that you saw them all. Yes. You know, just the abundance of love and joy and peace and happiness. Yes. It's there, you know. Yes. And um great story. Yes. Well, and he didn't give anybody a name at this place. He didn't say the father was God or anything. Yeah. And in my you know, in my heart, I think that that man that he was speaking of, that was laughing at yes. him, the leader. That was God himself. That is God. And yes. the angels, right? Yes, yep. most definitely. The kingdom. The kingdom. Yes. Wow, guys. Amazing story. Uh, go ahead and smash that like button. Get this video a big fat thumbs up. And also get inside the comment section. We want to know what you guys think. Yes. All he right. said the guy was like the father. The father. Like it was a relationship between the father yes. and... His and he felt children, that love. That pride and that. And he was like, you know, you got to go back. And he was like, oh, wow, I want to stay. <laughs> like, no, you just, got more work yes. to do, son. You know, so. It truly touched my heart when he said, like, in his marriage, his wife only asked him yes. for this one thing to go yes, and, you know, live on this island. But yes. he wanted the, you know, the excitement yeah. of being a firefighter. And... You know, it, it really touched my heart. It really, yeah. it truly touched my heart. So. But it, it definitely, um, you know, let you know that he's doing God's work. Yes. And, spreading um, the word. Spreading the word. And he's, you know, he's helping. You know, he's yeah. fighting fires and stuff like that. So yeah. God bless his heart. Yeah. God bless his soul. Guys, that's our time. We are signing off. Everyone, please have a blessed day out there. Here's your boy, Sean. And your girl. We love the pieces. Now. I love you more, baby. We, we love, love you guys. guys. Have an amazing day on, on purpose. purpose.